Thank you. Please go ahead and be seated. Man, what a sweet time of worship that was. Amen. Wow. Give the Lord a hand for that. Yeah. Boy. What an amazing time we've had. And man, I'm glad that you're all here. Glad that you joined us this morning in person. And all those who are viewing us on the live stream, we thank you for tuning in with us as well. And and hope that the spirit there in your place where you're watching is just as sweet as it is here where we are today. I said last week that I love the church. Amen. I, I just love the church and I love making uh, the idea of worshiping with you and being together here every week. Uh, I always look forward to being here with you. I look forward to, to preaching. And uh, what I want to do is to continue to share uh, the idea that this, making this, making church, the place to be. And so we're going to be looking today at the idea of being glad. The title of my message today is I was glad. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalm chapter 122. We're going to be reading our verses one and two this morning and looking at the idea of being glad to be here. Take your Bibles and turn there very quickly. And then when you get there, let's go ahead and stand. If you're able to, let's stand in honor of reading God's word this morning. And the Bible says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for the blessings you've given us for the opportunity to gather here this morning. And Father, I pray that what we offered you in that praise and worship time, Lord, was received as a sweet offering to you. That, Father, I know that, Lord, it, it, it doesn't even come close to what you have given us. But, Lord, I pray that our efforts will, will, will be honoring to you. And, Father, now as we step into this time of, of reading of your scripture and then preaching of your word, I pray, Father, that everything that I say here today, these will not be my words, but, Lord, they'll be yours. I pray the message that you have laid on my heart to preach is not my message, but also, Lord, is the one that you want me to share. And Father, I pray that the response from your people here and those watching us on the live stream, Father, would be as you desire for them to be. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please go ahead and be seated. The idea here with the, the word glad, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The idea of glad is, To cause to rejoice. In other words, what David is writing here, he says, it caused my heart to rejoice when they said to us, let us, let, said to me, let us go in the house of the Lord. This idea of it made us rejoice, made us excited, made us looking so forward to it. So my question is today, as we look about, I was glad or I I was made to rejoice when you got up this morning. And it was time to come to church and whoever was leading out of the house saying, hey, it's time to get in the car. It's time to go. Did all of a sudden when you hear those words, it caused you to rejoice this morning. I get to go into the house of the Lord. Or how about you that are watching on the live stream when someone says, hey, come on, let's all settle down. It's time for time for us to turn on the TV. The church is about to start. Did it cause in your heart a stirring that to make you rejoice because you are about to get to be a part of a great worship time. This is what the psalmist is talking about. I was made to feel rejoicing in my heart when even the words to be said, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. This is what we're talking about. The idea of and the background is this. This was an invitation given to people who were not able to necessarily be in Jerusalem every week. They were only there, they were in the outlying areas, and so they were only able to come to the temple at certain times. And man, it was very difficult where they were. And so what the idea is, is that you've been out into the desert for a while, you haven't been to this place of worship in some some good time, and all of a sudden now it's the call is that, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. And David was viewing it as a person who had been out, but he was coming up over the hill, and he looked out, and as soon as he topped the hill... He could see out over there. And man, there it was. There was the temple. That was the place they were headed. That was the place where they were going to unite with their people. They were going to unite with the Spirit of God. And he said, man, I'm coming from a dry desert. But boy, when I saw that temple, when I saw that place, man, I rejoiced. And I couldn't wait to get my feet inside that city because that city 
represented where God was going to be. I was glad when they called me from way out there and all the stuff going on that I could come into this place knowing that there was going to be peace, joy, comfort. There was going to be sweet fellowship. There was going to be praising. Man, it stirred my heart when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. My friends, I'm here to tell you as I've been praying over the last several weeks about these messages, what can make this the place to be? What can make a church the place to be? Well, it is when we as God's people are stirred with to rejoice about us being here. This will be the place for them to come when it's the place for us to be. When we get excited about being here, not that it's some job we have to do or some obligation I have to check, but when my heart, my heart is stirred to get to be here. So we look and we see that Jerusalem was a long trip and men that played the, the city had to look like an oasis to those who were out in the desert for so long. Oh, I was glad when I finally got to see it. My friends, the same should be for us. We've been out in the desert all week long. Amen. We've been out in the world that's been dry where we're, there's troubles out there. So when it got a chance, an opportunity, and then when we should have turned into the parking lot this morning and saw the oasis of First Baptist West or whatever church others may be being a part of, man, when we saw that, man, it was a, it was an oasis in that land and we knew things were going to be good. Man, there's going to be something wonderful happening in that place. So this is what the idea. So it's far more than just saying, oh, well, I was a little bit happy when they said, let us go to the board, go to the place. Ah, it was okay. I was, yeah, it was fun. No, he said, man, it caused my heart to rejoice to know what was going to be taking place. So I want to look very quickly, uh, this morning over a couple of things about this being the place to be. And why is it? Well, first of all, it's the place to be because it's God's will. Do you realize that God's will is for us to be together here? That's what he desires for us to be. God desires to be together with Him. He desires us to be together with each other. That's why He said it is good for us to be in the house of the Lord. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10.25, listen carefully, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. Now, I want to stop here for just a second. He says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as is the manner of some. Folks, listen to me. To some Christians, and maybe some here, this is not always the place to be. This is not our desire. But he says, forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together as some do. As some are. Some Christians don't see that the idea of worship, the idea of fellowship in the church is something that is important. He says, as is in the manner of some. But he says here, but exhorting. Exhorting one another. What this one, exhorting one another means to encourage each other to come. Do you know that's what we ought to be doing as brothers and sisters in Christ? We ought to be encouraging each other to come to this place. We ought to be inviting each other. We ought to be saying, hey, are you, go are you going to church Sunday? Man, we're going to have a great time. Amen. Someone else says, yes, I'm going to go to church. I can't wait to be there on Sunday morning. Can you imagine if that conversation happened every week for all the memberships of First Baptist West? Man, we're going to church Sunday. Yeah, we're going. Are you going? Yes. Because the Bible says we ought to exhort one another. We ought to invite each other. We ought to encourage each other to come to this place. And he says, especially, listen to me, especially and so much more as you see the day approaching. What day is that? That's the day of Jesus' return. He said, man, you ought to be, you ought to be exhorting each other. You ought to be encouraging each other to come because this, this you know what's going to come prior to Jesus is coming. We've been talking about it the last several weeks. There's going to come more trials and tribulations to the church. Amen. And he said, we ought to really be encouraging each other to be here on Sunday. We ought to encourage each other to join in on the live stream on Sunday because this it's going to be necessary even more and more and more as that day approaches. My friend, listen to me. The church is going to be tried like we've never been tried before. So he says, you really need to be there. Listen, it's like coming together. I love my family coming together. Amen. I love when all my girls get to come home. Man, I tell you what, when they're all three there, as soon as they're all together, I just, man, I'm just standing around going, boy, this is cool. This is so cool. Even when after about 45 seconds, they break into chaos at my house. 
When all three of them are home, I'm not kidding, chaos ensues. And I usually feel sorry for poor Stephanie because Stephanie, Sherry and Jade love to just hug on Stephanie and they tease her relentlessly because it, it just kind of drives Stephanie crazy. So they're all nuts and Stephanie's hollering, Dad, make them get off of me. They're going to coach, leave him alone. We're fine. But I'm just standing there going, boy, I love this. I love, I love my family being together. And I can imagine, listen to me, I can imagine right now God looking at all this. Hearing what He heard. Going, I love them being together. I love them. I love my kids coming together. I love it when they're all home. I love it when they're tuned in. I love it. Man, I love it when when uh, I, I, I get my, my my family together, my brothers and my sisters. We don't get together very often. But man, even last uh, last weekend or so, we had a, a wedding for my nephew and uh, my family. All but two of my siblings got to be there. And, and man, there's eight of us. So whenever we all get to be together, it's an amazing thing. And man, uh, one of my brothers that I hadn't seen in a long time didn't know if he was going to get to be there or not. When my brothers went and got him and brought him in, we were all like, whoa, he's here. And man, we got excited because family was together. And it was joyful to be there. And we were encouraging each other. Man, we laughed, we talked. It was great. And also, now as a pastor, man, I, I tell you what, I love when we have our, our, our church services because I love being here preaching to y'all. Amen? But I know what else is really cool is when we have our family days and we do uh, the kite days and you know all those things that we do before we couldn't do them. But I, man, I remember those days and every, man, our churchyard was full of people and standing in line getting snow cones and cotton candy and popcorn and eating. We just had a big meal together. I, man, I'm just standing as pastor and I'm looking around going, boy, this is cool. This is so cool to see our church just together. So can you imagine what God must be feeling when, when we get together as a, as a church family? That's why he says, man, do not forsake this. This is something special. This is a great time. Man, do not forsake this. Do not let this opportunity slide. He said, because you're going to be needing each other. And even so, as that day approaches, man, this is God's will that we be here today. It's God's will that we come together. The second thing is it's our place of worship. This is where we have dedicated this place. Years ago, somebody, and some of you are charter members of First Baptist West, that you were a part of the group that dedicated this building and said, this is our place. We're dedicating it to God. And we're, we're, we're allowing this to be His. We're not claiming it as ours. We're claiming it as God. This is our designated place to worship. As a matter of fact, how many of you were here when that this building was dedicated? This part of the building was dedicated. Is anybody still still here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So you you know what I'm talking about. You were part of the group that said this is the place. And how many of you were here when we dedicated the new section of the building? All right. Good. Good. So you remember the day that we cut the ribbon. We said today this. Part of the building now is joined with the other part of the building and this is God's place for Him to be. This is our place to worship. Now it's God's place. Amen? It's His. It's not like it, it's, it's ours and we hope that He'll come. As a matter of fact, I, I joke a lot of times and say that a lot of times in church we'll pray, Oh God, we invite You to this place today. Why would we invite God to this place? This is His. Amen? I shared before, that'd be like y'all coming to me after church and say, hey, Pastor, we're inviting you to 2306 Northwest 73rd for lunch. For y'all that don't know, that's my house. Now, if you said, Pastor, we're inviting you to, to, your, to, to, to 2306 Northwest 73rd for lunch, I'm going to laugh at you and say, wait, well, you don't have to invite me in. I just have to convince these two ladies to let me in. Amen? Because it's my house. I would love to have you come. Martha, get ready. We may have about 200 people for lunch today. But does that make sense? This is our place to worship. But folks, this isn't our place. 
The reason we had this place as our place of worship is because God has been established here and this is this place that's established. So what's different about this place than any other place? The Bible tells us in Exodus 3, 5, if you remember the story, Moses was going to the burning bush and when he got there, he, God said to him, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off for the place where you stand is holy ground. Well, my question is, what made, when he was walking, he took that final step and God said, stop. Stop. Now, remove your sandals. Because the place you are now standing is holy ground. Well, my question was, what made it holy here? But right here, he didn't tell him to stop. Back here, he didn't tell him to stop. It was right here. He said, okay, stop. Because it was at that point where God had declared that was His presence. That's where He was going to be. That's where you were going to be face to face with God. He said, right there. Now you're on that spot. My friends, listen to me. Can I share with you? That's what makes this building different than the, the Walmart you're going to go to. Among other things. But, but this place is different. Why? Because it's been designated as God's place. As a matter of fact, this is where we're going to feel His presence. We're going to feel God's presence in this place because this is His. But not only are we going to feel His presence, man, in His presence there's power, but then we're also going to feel His blessings. How many of you felt blessed this morning by singing those praises, man? And we were singing, being together. Whoo! What a blessing, amen? So we're blessed. Even those at home that are viewing this on the live stream, man, getting to sing those songs. What a, what a blessing. This is the place where we come together to receive those blessings. But not only that, man, we get to receive his peace. I remember just standing right over here, just a few minutes going, even in the first service, same thing, I talked about it. Man, when it was, we were all just singing of nothing but our voices. I'm telling you what, there was a peace that came over me right there. Because I knew we were in the presence of God. I knew we as a family, we were together, we were honoring God, and we were being blessed by that. And through his presence, and through His blessing, man, standing right over there, I'm telling you what, folks, I felt the peace. Hmm. I'm not going to feel that when I leave out of here today and go to wherever it is I'm going. Hopefully at my home, I will. But you're not going to sense that. So that's why He says, this is our place to worship. We are on holy ground here in this place. And it's good when they said, let us go to that place. It caused my heart to rejoice. And the last thing, it's our place of fellowship. It's our place of fellowship. Now, the idea here is that it's plural. He said, I was glad when they said to us. Because David here is saying there's going to be something special happen when we all get together in worship. There's, th listen, I, I tell you all the time how important it is for you to have a personal, quiet time with just you and God. Amen? How many of y'all have ever heard me say that from this pulpit? Yeah, there you go. All right, all of you have. Because I say it all the time. It is important that we have that. But there is something that happens when we all get together and we're singing and we're experiencing blessings and we're experiencing peace, there is something that happens when we get to do this together. This is a special time, amen? So he says, let us. Now, he also says that, that having everyone here is a blessing. As I shared in the first service, I love seeing you here for worship. And it's not the same preaching to an empty room with a camera in the back as we had to for months. Amen? I, it was cool and we did it. But I'm telling you, it's a whole lot more fun seeing your faces than seeing your pictures. Amen? Yeah, it's fun. I love having everyone here. It's us. It wasn't just me and it wasn't just the praise team. The praise team will tell you it's a whole lot more fun to lead singing when there's someone to lead other than me standing right over here in the corner moving back and forth. That's all they had. But man, it's something about us. But then there's also the idea of this, this idea of fellowship. 
Now, we as Baptists have kind of given a strange connotation to the word fellowship. As a matter of fact, when I, if I were to say, hey, today we're having a fellowship, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Food. Food. Amen? That's our fellowship. Do you understand that's not really the true idea of fellowship? That's not. We've turned it into that, but the idea of fellowship is this. Bonding through the Spirit. Bonding through the Spirit. That's the fellowship. So the idea is that we get to do this together. It's our place to fellowship. It's our place to bond together. The Bible says in John 17, 21, that they all may be in one. This is Jesus praying for us. That they all may be as one, be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us. So what he's saying is that bonding by the Holy Spirit of God, working in us, driving us together, drawing us into this presence, having one idea, one purpose, one goal. And this is where the fellowship is. This is our place of unity. Not only with each other, but with God. And with God, through Him, we can be unified together. That's why there can be so much going on in the church that's good, and there'll be so many different opinions, and so many different ideas, so many different backgrounds. Why can we all of a sudden, why can we come together and be so formidable that the Bible says the gates of hell cannot even prevail against this place? It cannot block anything. We can literally tear the gates of hell apart to preach the gospel. Why does it say we can do that with so many different varieties of things going on in our lives? Why can we do that? Because it is our fellowship. It is the bonding of us together by the Holy Spirit of God. My friends, listen to me. That's why the church works. And that's the only, listen to me, that's the only reason the church works. Because if we don't have that bonding of fellowship, of unity with God through the Holy Spirit and with each other, the church becomes nothing more than just a social gathering. We're like any other organization that you can join. But this is our place of fellowship. This is our place of bonding together. This is what makes the church so wonderful. This is what makes the church so powerful. But my friends, we've got to be careful because it is only that that keeps us together. If, if we decide to get off on our own, do our own things, my friends, the, the Spirit won't be so sweet. Without the Holy Spirit bonding us together, we are people who couldn't get along or accomplish anything. As a matter of fact, we'd be nothing but arguing all the time. But oh, when the Holy Spirit is there and when there is fellowship, there's a sweet spirit. How many remember singing that song, there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And it's come because of the presence of God bonding us together. Wow. What a place. Amen. What a place. I want to ask two questions as I wrap this up. Now these are going to be, if you will, soul searching questions and they're serious. Okay. Very serious questions. I, 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 you don't, I just want you to think about them and you don't, if anything, take them home or you at home. Talk, talk about them later. Think about them later. But the first question is this. What would you be willing to do to get to be here? What would you, seriously, what would you be willing to do to make sure you get to be here? In this place of fellowship, in this place of worship, in this place that God has commanded us to come together, what would you be willing to do to get to be here? Now think about that. Okay. The last question, actually, to me, is even more so searching. And when God placed them on my heart to ask, I had to ask them of myself. The second question is this. What would have to happen to make you not be here? What would have to go on to cause you 
not to come here. To basically forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Now, I want you to take these and I, I really want you to pray over them. Because in order for this to be the place to be, to do what God has called us to do, it's got to be a place that we feel glad, not happy, glad, causing us to rejoice in our hearts when someone says it's time to gather together. As we get ready to pray, the praise team is going to come back up in just a few moments. But if you're here today or maybe you're watching this morning, and for whatever reason, you don't sense that rejoicing spirit in you when it's time to go. Or maybe if you don't get to be here, you really don't feel much of a difference. I'll go next week if I can. What could be causing that? Maybe if you're here and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, man, today is the day to call upon His name to receive Him. If you sense life is not having that fulfillment, that there, there's got to be something better. If you're, if you're sensing a loneliness and an emptiness in your spirit, man, today is the day to, to understand what we're talking about here this morning about being glad because the Spirit of God is working in you. All you have to do today is call upon His name and say, God, I know that I need You. God, I'm lonely. God, I'm empty. God, I feel no purpose. God, I, I need a meaning in my life. And so today I call upon Your name, God, to forgive me of my sin. I claim You as my Savior, as the sacrifice on the cross for me. And today, God, I want to receive You into my life. Would You call upon His name? Right there at home, you can do it right where you are. Call upon His name. But maybe you're here and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. But that joy that I used to have, that, that peace that I used to get, that, that being glad that I used to have, something's happened to me. Now listen, I can tell you that you could still be saved and experience that, amen? There's no losing your salvation. You could lose the joy of that salvation that God has given you. Maybe you have been distracted by other things in this world. Maybe maybe the cares of this world have beaten you down. Maybe you've just gotten distracted by other stuff. But today you say, man, God, I, 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 want, I want to experience that again. I want you to restore to me the joy of your salvation. Put it back into my life, Lord, as I refocus, as I ask you to forgive me of being distracted. And Lord, I come to you today and ask that you... You do a great work in my heart. Renew me today, Lord. Renew me. Get my focus back on you today, God. My friends, you can do that right now. You at home, you can do that right now. And we're going to give you that opportunity at this moment. I'm going to ask the praise team to come on back up with me as we get ready to, uh, to lead out in this praise time. Folks, I want you to, in just a moment after we pray, I want you to stand if you can. Folks at home, I want you to to join in with us as singing. But if you need to come, man, come here. I'll, I'll be down front. I'll pray with you. If you're at home, you can call the church office. Someone will be there to, to, to talk to you, to pray with you. So if you'll just do that this morning. Oh, let us be glad. Let our hearts rejoice again because we're serving a risen Savior. Amen? Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today. Lord, we thank you for your love and your grace and the opportunity to be here. And Lord, as we step into this time of praise and worship now, I pray that everyone here, everyone at home, Lord, could sense your peace and your strength. But Lord, they could also sense your calling into their lives. And Father, we could have people come to know you as their Lord and Savior this morning. And Father, people could turn their lives to you and experience the peace. That God, your church could be re renewed in our strength, renewed in our commitment. And have that gladness, that rejoicing in our heart of knowing that we're in fellowship with you and you're in fellowship with us. And Father, that we're in fellowship with each other. Let that begin here today. Oh, God, work your spirit in. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Would you stand?